My name is Holly Rogers and I work for a company called Wessex Archaeology as a geoarchaeologist. Now, for those of you who don't know what geoarchaeology is or what a geoarchaeologist does, um, it's essentially the combination of geology, geography and other earth sciences together with archaeology to reconstruct past landscapes so we can figure out how humans would have interacted within their environment in the past. So how do we reconstruct past landscapes? It's essentially through um, looking at the sediments beneath the ground. So here I've got an image um, of a drilling rig on the left. Uh, this is a windowless sample drilling rig and it hammers down metre long um, tubes into the ground to obtain sediment samples from depth. So like this central image here we've got tubes one metre in length um, filled with sediment samples uh, from beneath the ground. Now, um, when we're on site, what's important for us to record? Well, we want the location data for these sediments. So we want to know exactly where they're from, the coordinates and elevations, so that we can see how it relates to other sediment data within the area. We also want to record the um, superficial and solid geology um, beneath the site. So that's what this sediment data shows what are the sediments are they silt sands clays gravels uh, what are the boundaries like in between the different sediments are they um, very sharp indicating that a deposit was laid down very quickly or are they more gradual indicating that the environment slowly changed over time and it's been deposited over a much longer period of time are there any inclusions such as snail shells or marine shells um, so we can think about what type of environment would they have lived in um, also, are there any organic deposits such as peat, which might contain um, environmental indicators such as um, pollen and water or plant remains, which can help us reconstruct um, the types of trees, vegetation and crops that would have been growing in the area. Um, and might also be suitable for radiocarbon dating, so we can assign dates to specific stratigraphies um, to help us just build up a better picture of how this site's changed over time. Um, we're also there to record archaeology if present, but uh, more specifically we're there to look at the deposits which are most likely to preserve it. So those peats, those organic deposits that um, are going to have the best chance of preserving those environmental indicators and um, deposits such as alluvium, which is silts and clays deposited in a fluvial environment um, or in a tidal environment, which um, effectively seals the archaeology, um, protecting it from oxygen, which will decay it over time. So um, the, these anaerobic environments um, represented by the peat and alluvial deposits are, are really great for us because um, we've got the best chance of um, having as many paleoenvironmental and archaeological um, remains preserved as possible. So what do we use this sediment data for? Well, once we've interpreted it, we um, input the boundaries and the different sediment data into um, deposit modeling software, um, which will help us to produce transects, digital elevation models and thickness plots. Now, all of these types of models um, help us to map deposits across the site, showing how they undulate and change, where they're thicker and thinner, uh, where they're present and where they're not present so they all help us to visually recognize what's going on beneath the site. The transects are a 2D cross-section um, each one of these representing a different borehole beneath the site so here you can see um, how the deposits um, interact, the different boundaries and um, how they change across um, a different section. Uh, the digital elevation models um, are great because um, they essentially, we can build them up so they're like layers um, which we can peel back through time um, and this helps us visualise what the topography would have looked like at different points in time for humans interacting with it so we can effectively um, see what their landscape would have looked like um, and how they may have used it or moved within it. 
thickness plots are also um, useful. Uh, for instance, if we wanted to, um, if Pete was present on a site and we wanted to find um, where the thickest deposits of it were, rather than excavating a whole site, we can pinpoint areas with uh, greater potential to preserve archaeology or those environmental indicators. So we could map the thickness of peat across a site and figure out where um, it's thickest and where we've got the best chance of finding archaeology and um, those environmental indicators if they're present. Um, so hopefully that gives you a better idea about what geoarchaeology is and um, what I do within my role as a geoarchaeologist. Um, if you're interested in a career within geology, geoarchaeology, archaeology or within the heritage sector then definitely look at the Wessex Archaeology website where you can find more information. Thank you.